So I kind of wanted to make this video because over the last two, three weeks, I guess, I probably along with a lot of you have been bombarded with uh, things that we need to buy because they're better than everything else. The big one that probably almost got me and it may get me again in the future, I don't know, is the Insta360 Ace Pro. Now I've had a chance to play with the Insta360 Ace Pro and there's a, a video that I did when I was in Hamilton visiting a friend of mine that had one. And you know what, it's a, it's a great camera. It does everything that it talks about, that it promotes, it actually does that stuff very well. But just because a camera does the things that it promotes really well, doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best camera for you or for me. Let's talk about why I bought this camera right here that I haven't opened yet instead of spending the money on an Insta360 Ace Pro. I have uh, a lot of action cameras. Primarily, you know, I do buy a lot of my own action cameras based on, for one, based on some of the advertising. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. It looks really good. And let's, let's be completely honest. Uh, there are some people that can work with action cam footage to make it look pretty impressive. Look at the Insta360 team, look at the GoPro team. Their marketing team is fantastic for making their stuff look like a lot of us will never probably be able to get our footage to look like. You know, I've fallen, I've fallen into the trap just like everybody else. Not necessarily with these cameras that I have here to the side. And I'll give you a for instance. This one, this one here, this is the uh, GoPro Hero 7. And this camera actually was really good. You guys can see it here, right? The GoPro Hero 7. I got it I got it at a decent deal. I think it's when the GoPro Hero 8 had come out. I bought the 7 because it was on sale. I had to buy some extra stuff, but it has a, the ability to have an external mic, et cetera, et cetera. And it was, it was GoPro. So I was like, it's GoPro. It's got, it's pro. It's got pro right in the name. So it's got, it's got to be awesome. Then the next camera that I went for, again, and this was kind of, because of my own needs was was this camera here now i this is this is not the first insta 360 actual 360 camera that i have owned by any means uh, i had the original insta 361 i have i still have the insta 361 x this is the x2 but i didn't get the x3 because i really didn't find that there was enough for my needs again to warrant me going out and spending another six, $700 for a camera that basically I, I have a couple of them already. There it is right there that do do everything that I needed to do. And the bonus, of course, with the 360 cameras, if you're looking at 360 cameras is that it captures everything. You don't really have to do a lot of framing. You can frame it later, but, but the uh, downfall of course, is that the image quality when you end up getting it out to wherever you're putting it is not as good as let's say maybe this camera because this one captures in 4k and outputs in 4k this one captures in 5.7k but exports or outputs in 1080 because it only takes a piece of that 5.7k because the 5.7k is the whole 360 image so you kind of have to be aware of that and understand how to make that footage look really good then, then uh, this one. Now this one actually I use a lot. This one is probably my go-to camera as of now. And of course this is the Insta360 one. There's the R and the RS, I have both. And it's because it has the 4K, which means if I want 4K, I got it. And if I want to switch this out because it's modular, then I can. You'll see this one's actually the R, but I have the RS upstairs. Uh, you can put a 360 camera and uh, it, it does really good. You know, if you look at the RS that's out there right now and you look at the uh, 1X3, for instance, the 1X3 definitely does 360 video better, but this one's kind of jack of all trades, master of none, master. Y you know what I'm saying? So you kind of have to choose, but I choose this way because I don't need it to be at that level, especially if I'm doing motor vlogging stuff. It's, you know what, it's the, it's the story, it's the content, it's whatever. Does it have to be perfect? No, but there was one thing that stopped me, stopped me, number one, from going to the Insta360 Ace Pro. Two things, price. I didn't, I honestly, I didn't need to spend, and that's Canadian, right? I didn't need to spend another 
six like seven hundred dollars with tax. This is again Canadian money to get a camera that honestly during the day when I shoot because I actually when I was out visiting uh, the friend of mine that has the Ace Pro, I put it up against the RS, and in normal daylight, not to, to me, not much of a difference in image quality. Uh, I thought when I was filming that the Ace Pro may have been a little wider, but I have gone over and looked at that footage over and over and over again once I got home, and I'm like, I don't, it's not, I don't think it is. It's just that the two cameras were slightly off-centered from each other so one just kind of when it had the screen looked wider and of course it looked wider because on the ace pro it has a nice wide screen big display which again allowed me to see everything whereas on the insta 360 rs you get you get tiny screen so you don't necessarily get a full field of view which kind of limits me in, in my my perspective of what was happening so I hummed and hawed. I got home from that trip and I'm like, do I want a, a Ace Pro? And the simple answer was, I went and looked at the difference between first the Ace and the Ace Pro. Number one, you can't find anything online about the Ace at all. Zero. I'm like, has nobody bought it? Did they not send the Ace out to anybody? Insta360, if you're watching this, I would be happy to take a look at the Ace. Because in my opinion, you save yourself a hundred bucks, which for a lot of people, that's a lot of money. You probably lose some of the uh, ability to shoot in the dark. Now I don't use an action camera in the dark, so that's great and all, but completely useless for me. And that's that's a kind of what, this was a long intro to this, this, this story. A lot of the features that they promote, which are cool, you have to really just put it into perspective are they features that you require? Are they features that are gonna make your workflow or what you're capturing better? Of course, the big one was the Ace Pro was low light. I don't shoot in low light. Most of my action cam stuff is when I'm riding a motorcycle and it's, and it's bright daylight because I don't like riding my motorcycle at night anyway. We live in an area with a lot of wildlife deers and all that kind of stuff and they come out at night and I don't need to be going around a corner in the dark and hit one because motorcycle versus full-size deer, neither wins that battle. And if one of you is gonna win, it's probably the deer. So that feature into itself, kind of useless. Flip up screen. I do kind of like the flip up screen because you, if, if this is gonna be your one and only camera, the flip up screen is cool for sure, right? It gives you a nice view of yourself. But again, this is something that I'm primarily gonna be using on a motorcycle, which means it's gonna be sitting on my chin, flip up screen is completely useless. Where am I even supposed to flip it? And if I did flip it, I couldn't see it anyway. So the only benefit would be having that camera on my handlebars facing this way. In that instance, I'd rather have a 360 camera because then I can spin the camera around and see things, not just me. That's why I have this camera. The big test for me and, and the reason I went with this was uh, when I tested my RS, up against the Ace Pro. I wanted to see if either camera, like I said, was wider. I, and I can use a 360 camera if I want up here for sure, but my workflow becomes harder, becomes longer, and the quality isn't as good as when you shoot with an actual 4K camera. I was like, okay, so what happens? Maybe, 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 maybe the Ace Pro or the Ace will have a wider lens. No, no. So me buying that camera would have been me falling for a lot of the sales pitches in regards to features that really aren't gonna benefit me at all. Especially not gonna benefit me based on the fact that I have all these cameras already. And just so you guys can see, uh, because I've tested a lot of action cameras in the past, you know, you guys you guys see that, right? I'll just I'll roll that up there. There's there's action cams. And that's 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 one bag. Yeah, that's one bag. So I, I've got plenty. And for me, the biggest issue is always width because when I ride with this, which is my camera that I use now, great image quality for sure, but I don't get my whole handlebars. I get like a small section in the front. And for me, that takes away of the experience of being able to see everything that I see. When I was speaking to my friend Jesse, he had a GoPro. He has a GoPro 12. And he told me, he told me this. And it was that the only reason that this camera, 
the GoPro Hero 12 existed for him was for when he needed to shoot wide. This is so wide. This gives you full 360 degree horizon lock in 4K. Right. Just kind of why I was saying like this will exist only for the times I need that like crazy good stabilization. Probably POV. I want it 4K and wide. Right. Um, because there's probably some clients that I might work for where I could throw in a shot from this. They might prefer it if it's a little higher quality. Right. And he has on his the GoPro Max lens, which makes it even wider. And that sparked my interest. I was like, hmm. Because if it wasn't any wider, there was a there's a chance that I probably would have went with just the ace. And again, I don't understand why there's no ace videos. I don't need the pro. Definitely don't need the pro. 8K is nice on the Ace Pro, but the Ace does 6K. Probably has a smaller sensor, which means it's not as good in the low light, but again, don't matter. Anyways, that was his thing. He's like, the 12 has the ability to have, for one, it's wider right out of the box, and then it has this ability to put the Max Pro on, or the Max Lens, sorry, Max Mod, whatever they call it. I went online looking during Black Friday, and they had the GoPro Hero 9. This fella, this fella right here, GoPro Hero 9, on sale, Canadian, $250. Now that is cheaper than if I were to go out and buy like an Acaso Brave 8, which isn't gonna be nearly as good a camera as this 9 is. And really the 9 and the 10, pretty much image quality are the same. There's a few features in it that they've changed, but, but I would have paid $100 more. So for $250, GoPro Hero 9. I don't think you can beat that. And I think this may end up being my primary camera. Now the bonus is, of course, I have till like January because I bought it during the Christmas time to, to play with it. Oh, it even comes with a case. Check that out. I have no idea. This is it, the 9. Uh, and this is what I kind of wanted to talk about. I'm not even buying the newest GoPro. Could I buy a 12? Sure. Could I have bought an 11 or a 10? Sure. Could I have bought just a nine? <laughs> yeah, because for one, 20 megapixel images, shoots in 5K 30 or 4K 60, perfect. Can go 10 meters or 33 feet under water. 1080p live streaming, hyper smooth three, sweet deal. Has a bunch of whatever. You get all their, upload your footage to the cloud, I guess, that, uh, while charging. Again, you gotta make sure it's charging because a lot of cameras, that's a big requirement because it chews up a lot of battery. And uh, all this stuff, you guys may be able to see that here. Voice control, eight times slow-mo, data over data overlays, really. Uh, time Warp 3, live streaming, super photo HDR, raw photos, touchscreen, webcam mode, et cetera, et cetera. The last thing I just kind of want to say, because I'm not, we're, I'm not doing a review of this yet, you will see some, some unboxings, I guess, of this camera soon do your homework do your homework i've seen uh, a few videos of people that let's say gave the ace pro a negative they were like mm. and, and and honestly it was they didn't do their homework they didn't look at the videos and try to figure out what do i need checkbox 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 what do i not care about checkbox checkbox check checkbox what camera provides the things i need for me as far as i can tell this provides everything that i need half the price of the Insta360 Ace, which is probably the one that I would have bought, just the Ace. Okay, so I came outside just to try this because this this bike still has a snow on the seat and uh, I should have wiped that off. Anyways, I wanted to see the difference, even with this bike, how the widest that this camera can shoot in versus the GoPro Hero 9 to see how uh, it would be if this was chin mounted. So let's just move this to where my chin would be. So right kind of here. So if I had this touch on my chin, you guys probably can see in the mirror what I'm doing. This would be how wide it can shoot. And I really don't care about audio quality. Uh, I find the RS is fine. Both, I, it's, it's decent enough, I think, with the uh, uh, external mic adapter plugged in, but really it's width. So, I shoot in 4x3 on this camera all the time, so 4K, 4x3, and I have set the GoPro Hero 9 to do the same. So, 
let's uh, see. This is the RS, which is the same width as the Ace Pro. They don't shoot any different. So let's switch to the GoPro and see what that's like. Okay, so this is the uh, GoPro Hero 9 Black. And again, you guys will be able to get an idea. I've got it set up in my hands. Same thing, 4x3. This is running the Super View. So this is kind of what I was most interested in to see if it actually is wider, because if it is, then I'm gonna keep the camera. If it's not, then I'm gonna send it back. And what I'll probably do is uh, pay the extra and we'll, we'll end up getting the Ace. Not the Pro, because I don't, I don't need the Pro. I just don't see, I don't see, don't see the need for it. Anyways, let's go to Chin Mount to see, to see what this is like. All right, so again, you guys can see in the mirror, hopefully. Chin Mount right there, right, good. And if I was riding, the big thing for me is being able to get my handlebars in that in the shot. And this bike has been sitting outside for so long, you know, it's got leaves and everything on it. Anyways, what is, what is that? Uh, key here is how does it, how does it look, right? How is it for uh, width? I'm trying to keep the bike sort of or me leaned a bit so it's the same that i'd be riding but we should be able to get a good idea good idea all right i'm gonna go back in take a look and we'll continue continue the video um but i thought this was important for me to check before i finish the video because i'm like what if it's not actually any wider that that would suck all right let's go uh let's go in uh, i think it'll be a good companion to these cameras here right these these cameras and this camera and even this camera which is my go and definitely to this camera but only time will tell 250 I got like a month to play with it and if I don't like it it's I bought it on Amazon so I can I can send it back that's that's it do your homework don't fall into the marketing ploy that's out there especially on a camera that's new I guarantee you all the videos that came out on day one it's like hey look this camera is released and the, the the YouTubes get flooded, of course, with reviews. And some of them are very very honest reviews, for sure. Some of them are uh, paid, bought and paid for, for sure. And some of them just omit the negatives. They are told what they kind of have to say during this video, which is fine. It's an advertisement, you know. So they will point out the features that make this camera what they think is worth buying but they definitely won't tell you any of the features that are missing or are features that people may actually want like myself yeah do your homework try to find videos that maybe came out a couple days or a week later especially for reviewers maybe like myself that gotten a product or paid for a product you know a week or two weeks after the product gets released because you know that they probably ordered it and uh, it took that long because people that got the video on day one, there's, a, there's, there's probably a reason that it was sent to them. Not always, but sometimes. All right, guys, uh, stay tuned for the GoPro Hero 9 review in 2024. Yeah, this, this camera has been out for a long time. And uh, maybe, maybe Insta360 will send me an ace because they want somebody on the internet to see if it's any good. Maybe, somebody. I'll do it. All right, guys, I'm out. Hope that you had a great holiday and uh, got some cool toys. And we'll see you guys in the new year. This video may be out in the new year. I don't know. All right, guys, I'm out. Later.